Because I don't feel Chris Watts acted alone, you see. I don't believe he acted alone. That's why there's people that are scared of me talking to Blair, talking to Chrissy, talking to Dylan, talking to Shannon, talking to anybody in the case, Miss Cadell. Because he knows, they know I will get on, I won't let go, I will solve this case. Now I feel it's time to tell you what Chris Watts told me. You know he sent me a number of emails. This is what Chris told me through Blair and David. Whatever you think of those people. This is what I've been told. And we got Deborah from California, lady in America. Again, she doesn't want to be known. She's going to be coming on my Patreon on Wednesday. Look out Wednesday when the next whistleblower appears. Pen pal whistleblowers. She started writing to Chris when her mum introduced her to um, the Watts case through Armchair Detective. She got interested in it, wrote to Chris. I don't think there's any love interest in this one, not from her end. But I said to her, what do you look like? Would you be in your late 30s with long black hair? She said, you know. I said, well, guess. And she's proved she's got letters and I've seen them. I wouldn't lie to you. None of these people are made up. Blair tomorrow. A new one. A new pen pal. With long black hair in her thirties. Attractive. What a surprise. You can't trust second hand information from a peddler of lies. Hell of a time trying to convince people that Blair is real. This is this is from Flair. You know our friend Chrissy, who's also real, when Dylan, Chrissy. I've seen them, they are real. Yeah, Blake was here, uh, Blair. Also real, when Dylan, Chrissy. They are real. Blair's real. This is this is from Flair. Oh yeah, Claire's real. Yeah, so yeah, we have been talking to Chris Watts. He's not my best friend. He's not my best friend. <laughs> Chris talks to me through Blair because I'm in England. Letters don't lie. Emails don't lie. Uh, my guess, Blair, as I don't know how to put this, um, is scared. She's had somebody following her home from work now for a few weeks, and she's had to take detours, and she's absolutely sure. Um, it's a bit of a somber occasion for me, really, because we had Chrissy, as you know, uh, attacked a few weeks back, who, who's a pen friend. Chris Watts, and now we have this young lady who's too scared to have her voice on in case it gets recognised. And I, I understand that. And I can guarantee you these emails are real. I can guarantee you, and you will see soon because I, I tell you, oh, he's going to prove it to us. Chris is going to connect to us fully. No more Blair. Blair's at the picture now. Blair is at the picture. Thank you for introducing us to him, Blair. We'll take over from here because it's too much stress for you. We don't want that. Blair is no longer um, in contact with Chris. We are, which is brilliant because it's easier now. And I don't want Blair suffering because we want to speak to Chris. <laughs> we do it ourselves, thanks. Now I feel it's time to tell you what Chris Watts told me. You know he sent me a number of emails. This is what Chris told me through Blair and David. 
whatever you think of those people. This is what I've been told. Today is an upsetting day for my channel and everyone and my spanners. I like to consider them my team, our family. And you guys are our community. You've been lied to and duped because I've been duped. Yesterday, I found out, along with the rest of you, that the list of things being said between Heather and Chris was false and pre-written by Heather herself. How do I know that? Well, she already gave us the first few pages. And we know the handwriting. We know what... Sorry. She explained that she wanted to share them with me. And so we did. Now, bearing in mind, she proved herself. She proved herself many times before. I guess she just couldn't give it up. I guess there's some sort of addiction to being talking to Chris that she couldn't give it up, I suppose. But I want to say this now and again, and Cadillac, she did used to speak to Chris, and all our early info is correct. Since February, no. Seems to be all made up. So she provided us with a little more information each time. Every day that she was on the phone, she sent us a little bit of information and I would cover it during the show if she wanted it released. She told us that Chris didn't want the whole thing released because he wanted to do an appeal down the line so we couldn't have all the information. So she just gave us a little bit. I never saw this stuff. She gave it the bubbles, like a few lines. I've been duped. I admit it. But at least I'm brave enough to stand here now and tell you I will never believe a word she says again. Ever. Whatever she says. Now, not everything Heather gave me was a lie. Obviously, in the early days, we said, hang on a minute, what's all this? And she'd give us the letters. And I would guarantee you she has many letters from Chris. But it all went sour around february when she wrote a letter to him a nasty letter and she and he cut her off she hasn't spoke to him since february i don't think so everything since then is a lie in my opinion we're not fools here i'm sure detective a team alive we're not fools the police are at liberty and have to investigate this sort of confession from David Carter. He's confessed to what Chris has said. They, I don't know what the law is in America, but here we'd have to check it out. But we're going to demand they check it out. I mean, first of all, just tell us, how well did you know, this is for the people that are watching from all over the world, how well did you know Chris Watson? How how did you get to speak to him? I was um, in Dodge whenever he first came to Dodge in uh, 2018 uh, when he came on Unit 11. So um, I got to work out with him and um, go to the gym and eat meals with him and um, have Bible studies with him. So I got to know him quite a bit. What made him confine this vital information to you, do you think? I think that he wanted to talk to somebody and he knew that I wouldn't judge him because it's not what I can do or what I want to do. So he thought that he could open up to me and express um, what really happened. Now you said to me that you've been you've been in prison for a while and you said this guy there's no way he would kill his own children. You you honestly thought that, David, right? Yeah, I still believe that um, with, with all my heart. So um, I don't think that after the after the information that he gave me that he was the um, only person involved, I think that he's trying to cover up for uh, Nicole. You see, he said to us that he's going to take this information to the grave and never tell anybody. But he's told you. Yeah, he's uh, he's told me, but he thought that I wouldn't bring that information out and that he could come out with me. And a lot of people wonder why I haven't said nothing because I think everybody knows what the trolls have done to me over the last couple months and, and uh, ah. they, still continue, they still continue to do it, so. Don't buy it.
information after the investigation. Um, go through all the work for them to tell you, yes, the doc community, you're not credible. Uh, there's somebody above. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pass on your phone number so you can waste their time. They're not going to listen to you. You're not credible. You go all the way to the freaking president of the United States if you want to. They're not going to listen to you. You're not credible. Why aren't we entitled to our opinion that she needs investigating? That's the one question I have for you. If you can have your opinion she's innocent, why can't we have our opinion that she needs looking at? Because I'm only doing the same as what the family did. I'm investigating her. I'm only doing the same as Tammy and Coder are doing right now, looking at evidence now, now. The case has changed, guys, and I'm so pleased about it. And I'm pleased that the Rusex have brought it to my attention. Listen to this. And that he was going to go down for it anyway, so he might as well just take responsibility for all of it. Yeah, he didn't want to uh, encode it or take the check. The case is closed. Why is she investigating? Now. If the case is closed, why is Tammy investigating now? In 2022. Why? If it's closed. I'll tell you why. Because it's only closed in Weld County. It's only closed in Frederick Police Station. It's not closed in the CBI or FBI. Listen. Now. Um, you don't want the baby. You don't want the uh, nickel. And just right there, Trying to get the baby. Do you know if she helps you anything else? As far as the disposal or? Yeah, I, um, I believe he said that um, she... Helping get those, uh, the babies that uh, were on oil tanks and that got their snack. Sorry, I'm taking some notes. Did you talk at all about like, having to drug the little girls or like how did he smother them or when, what, at what point she smothered them? Guys, she's still investigating. Now that gives me hope. Gives us hope. And I hope that gives you hope that Tammy does lie. She told the world the clock was stopped and she can't investigate anymore. And yet here I am proving that she was investigating just before Christmas. And I, she hasn't told us she's investigating. She told someone on our show in a, in a phone call. I say good on you. Good on you, Tammy. Keep investigating. So that she was out there? Did she help them get the oil things and stuff? Okay. Um, so I have that number. Let me talk to him and can I get what you next So Tammy sets up a trip to find out the truth about NK. So with me, um, but we're still trying to work on trying to figure stuff out. We're trying to get, you know, some kind of any kind of, you know, corroborating evidence that we can find to show that she was possibly involved. Wow. Boom. We are still trying to get corroborating evidence that she was any way involved, Coder and I, from the words and the mouth of Tammy. Don't believe the clock has stopped. And if you're NK or a dad, you'd be very worried because I'm done with this. I am now full on this case. After this crap last week, oh, we've got the tape. You're not going to get it. We're going to get it first and cash in on it, fine. Yeah, you can um, go to the home tree, you can call the car over your investigation after investigation. Um, go through all the work for them to tell you, yes, the doc community, you're not credible. Okay. Uh, there's somebody above. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pass on your phone number so you can waste their time. They're not going to listen to you, you're not credible. You go all the way to the freaking president of the United States if you want to. They're not going to listen to you. You're not credible. David. Yeah. What person or people 
in AD's group contacted you. No, don't tell me who. Let's just say did or how many people contact you after that first time on panel and, and helped you with money of some sort. Is that a serious question? Is that a serious question? Yeah. Yes, it's a serious question. Did I have anything to do with setting or um, connecting you with anybody from AD's group for money? I received that, um, that contract back in, in September. You, I'm not talking about any contract. There's no contract.
That's a wrap. <laughs> what did you learn from that? <laughs>